Production Live here with Evan Morgan, director and writer of The Pedestrian Jar. Are you excited for TIFF right now? Uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited. Mm -hmm. And this is your first time in the festival. How does that feel? Uh, well, it's a great rush. I, I've had friends who've had films in it before, and so you sort of, you, you, and envy is a very popular emotion, I think, amongst people at film school. <laughs> and this becomes sort of a, a first hurdle that uh, when you're a Toronto-based filmmaker that I think you, uh, you have to acknowledge, and it feels great to do it. Great, awesome. And can you tell me a bit about The Pedestrian Jar and what that is? Yes. Uh, people who are Toronto residents might remember that a couple of winters ago, there was a bar bizarre trend of pedestrian uh, fatalities and accidents and injuries. I think there was one every 14 days uh, for a stretch in February. And um, a city councillor approached me actually to do a film treatment of the issue. I think originally as sort of a, uh, an edgier kind of PSA that might appeal to a younger audience. Um, and so I went to work and came up with this notion for a m short mock doc about an office of co-workers who come up with this idea. If you hit a pedestrian on the way to work, you have to put a quarter in a jar and it becomes an effective deterrent. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the project didn't survive the regime change at City Hall. And um, I was sort of left with this finished kind of quasi-PSA. Uh, and I just figured I would submit it to TIFF. Thankfully, it has a second life there. Great. So it's kind of like the whole swearing jar concept, but you're applying it to hitting pedestrians on the Precisely. street. Precisely, yeah, exactly. And it, what genre is this in? Like, is it funny? I mean, I, I don't mean to laugh, but it seems... Oh, funny. yeah, it's absolutely supposed to be funny. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I really, ex when I was trying to think of ways to approach this issue, I, I knew I didn't want to do a conventional kind of PSA, like what you see on, you know, television late at night. Um, and uh, I think I, I, was, I was sort of trying to find a way to enter this subject uh, with a kind of unexpected lightness, mm -hmm. uh, which I th thought would actually help make it more provocative and more interesting to people. And then one morning after you know, a day of trying to exhaust ideas on a treatment, I woke up and I was just like, hey, what if they just you know, put money in a, a jar? Okay. Just exactly like a swear jar. Yeah, and do you think that the number of pedestrian fatalities will go down? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I think it's a futile endeavor, actually. Okay. Um, but, I mean, I, I actually don't even drive, so I'm a, a, a very loyal pedestrian almost by default rather than choice. <laughs> but, uh, and I, it, it's hard to walk, you know, uh, as often as I do and not notice that drivers are sort of, you know, that you're clearly not their first priority, that they're much more stressed about making that right turn. And as a result, you're kind of invisible at times. And if you're not a vigilant pedestrian, I don't. I, I think that you know you could find some trouble if you go. You know, if you're, if you're careless. And I think that the message of the movie, in that sense, as it relates to pedestrians, you know, don't take drivers for granted. Um, they're human beings, they're not you know robots that are just gonna stop the second you take a step in front of the street. Uh, you have to be a little more vigilant. And I think that there is a, a, a resonant message within this movie that could prove helpful. But I think that uh, although drivers ought to be able to look at it and have a laugh about themselves. Um, it doesn't make sort of the enterprise of driving any less stressful or distracting or whatever it is. And I think accidents will happen. It's just people got to be a little more careful when they're, you know, participating with the different modes of transportation on the road. Okay, great. And when can we check out your film? Uh, the premiere Sunday at 8.45 at Tiff Bell Lightbox 3 mm -hmm. uh, as part of Short Cuts Program 2. And it'll be playing again at Jackman Hall at the AGO on Monday at 5 p.m. Okay, wonderful. And do you have a website where we can look out for your upcoming work? Yeah, if you want to look up uh, echopicturespictures.com, that's my new production company. We've got some great stuff on there, and uh, we're doing some interesting things. We actually won the Audience Award yesterday for the Emerging Filmmakers Competition. Oh, in congratulations. Tip. Thanks. <laughs> and you recently that's finished awesome. production on your first feature film, The Dirties. Can you tell me what's dirty? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, The Dirties is... Um, it's another mock doc. Uh, it's about two kids in high school who are making a documentary about their lives, basically. And uh, they, their lives are, are, are actually pretty terrible, save for their own friendship. And they, they're always getting picked on by bullies at school. And so they decide for their high school videography class that they're going to make this movie um, called The Dirties about them uh, enacting revenge on the bullies in their class. Uh, but of course, what happens is that the movie that they start to make becomes a movie more about their real lives and their current situation and there's this ominous idea that well uh, how how literal is this revenge is this something that they're truly planning as a fiction for their you know high school videography class or are these kids unstable enough that uh that they 
sort of lost all track of reality and uh, it's one of those. <laughs> okay, cool. And what was the inspiration for your feature? Um, my uh, partner, Matt Johnson, had a web series called Nirvana the Band the Show, which became pretty popular here in Toronto for a while. And um, he acted in that and acts in this, and it became sort of like we, uh, as soon as we had um, the elements in place, the production elements, a crew that we could rely on, it just felt like the next logical maneuver. And we wanted uh, another movie that would sort of showcase his natural charisma and his interaction. Um, with uh, the other actor in it, and so uh, it's the whole thing was unscripted in that sense. There was no written dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, Story-wise, it was very precisely scripted. But um, other than that, we just sort of turned on the camera and let him riff with whatever other actors were in the scene. We had some schools that, well, since it all takes place in high school, and we really didn't have the budget to fabricate that to find, uh, you know, a set and then populate it with kids. <laughs> we just went to real high schools yeah. and, <laughs> and pretended to be students and <laughs> sort of hid behind a door. But uh, uh, so it was uh, kind of a very amped up guerrilla project in that sense. Um, but uh, the, the we did actually receive official participation from the schools, but it was uh, a very interesting film experience just to sort of disappear into a real environment like that okay, awesome. and put it together. Great. And uh, well, thank you very much right. and best of luck at the festival. Great. Thank you. Okay. I'm Giddy Elman reporting for TTNHD Production Live. Oh,